but I've seen a bunch of them eating nanner pudding and cookies and pecan pie. That's on top of a bowl of chili and hot dog and all that stuff. Amen? And so if you missed it, you missed it. We just had a marvelous time yesterday. And uh, we just, uh, I was war slam out last night when I got home. I mean, I just was hurting. Uh, I don't go to bed at 5, 6 o'clock, but I, I, I went and took a nap, and then I got up and went to bed. Hallelujah. Amen. I mean, I, I was hurting. I mean, we were just wore out when we got home yesterday. And uh, we, I, I ran into Billy and them. They were dragging out a food line, and they were tired, too. But uh, we just had a great time, and I appreciate everybody. And like like what she said, there's several folks worked up. Uh, now, where's the people party involved here? We still have some, where's the, uh, we've got some goodies still over there. Is that what I'm supposed to announce? We've got some goodies left over that's sitting over there in the kitchen. They're asking a dollar per thing. So there's several, several things of goodies still left over, and you're welcome to go by, and the ladies, you go and give it to the ladies. Somebody be over there, you give the money to them, but they're a dollar per thing container. And uh, that, there's several goodies, and you go over there and have at it. And uh, I, I loaded up on several of it yesterday myself, and it's really tremendous, really good. So uh, uh, have at it. We just enjoyed that yesterday. Now let me uh, give you a, a few announcements. I need to meet with the all the folks that are going to go to the camp meeting down in Greensboro, Jamestown, Midway Baptist Church, okay? I need to meet you all up here after church today, okay? I've got a list of you here. Uh, those of you that think you want to go, if you'd like to go, uh, we're going to be leaving next, not tomorrow, Monday, but Monday week. It'll be, we'll be leaving. We'll talk about it here in just a little bit, probably leave about noon or 2 o'clock, and then be heading down to the meeting on Monday night, stay Monday night, and come back Tuesday like we did last year, okay? So any of you want to go to that camp meeting, old-fashioned jubilee, and boy, they feed you well. They take care of you. We just have a wonderful time in the Lord. You're welcome to go. I need to finalize. I've got the motel rooms. I need to make sure that we're on cue with everybody and everybody has a room and all of that good stuff. So meet me after church here and let me know if you want to go with us and we'll talk about it, okay? Now don't forget, now we've got several things coming up next month. We're going to have an exciting month as well. Uh, December the 14th, the inspiration, gospel singing, the inspiration is going to be right here. Tremendous, tremendous uh, evening. We're going to have a wonderful evening that evening, and we'll probably have a bunch of goodies and uh, drinks and things like that, and uh, so everybody can partake in. But you come. Uh, don't forget that. That'll be December the 14th. Everything is so busy and full in December. And then also December the 22nd, that's the last Sunday night, that's Sunday night before Christmas, we're going to have our big banquet, our Christmas banquet down at the War, uh, is it a War Memorial, almost at Museum, it's a memorial in, in, uh, and down in Benton. And so we're going to have it the same place we did last year, we had a great time, plenty, plenty, plenty of fun and food, and we're just going to have a good time with the Lord this year as well. So keep those dates in mind. Visitors and anybody, everybody, bring your family and everybody, and we'll let you know the details a little bit more about that as we go along. That's enough of that. I'm tired of announcements. Amen. Us, we shall come on this morning, and let's receive the offering as well. And uh, thank you for coming. How many of you stuffy right now, hot or stuffy? Raise your hand right now. All right. I see people fanning, and I don't know whether you're about to pass out or what you're about to do, so we'll take care of it right here in just a minute. All right? We'll look at it, and uh, this is a kind of in-between. You get in here, it's cool outside. You get in here, and everybody's breathing, and it gets hot in here. So uh, we try to accommodate and make sure everybody's okay. Uh, I appreciate whoever... Whoever had the cold that I had, I appreciate whoever took it from me. I appreciate y'all taking it from me. Amen. But we've had, we've had people coughing and cold and sick and just so much of everything. And so uh, we need to be praying for each and every, every one. we got quite a few folks that we love in our church that we're praying for. And we, we always want to remember them. And uh, remember Miss Joy Price. We remember Amen. Miss Joy. We love Miss Joy. And uh, thank God for her. We love her. And Miss Francis, praise God, she's here. She ain't, she's not feeling all that 1,000%, but she's here. And we're glad that the Lord, the Lord helped her. Junior back there, he was in that hospital a few weeks ago, last week, I guess it was. And so he's here. And so thank God for these folks getting touched by the Lord and being able to come. And, and brother
brother uh, brother Creech back there will remember his son as well, brother Creech, and uh, we were always going to remember him and uh, Tim and uh, and you you want to give any more word? I know you've been asking. Him. He's back home. Praise God. Amen, buddy. That's what we want to hear. Amen. 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 Well, let's let's remember all these prayer requests. We got several folks need prayers and uh, folks been sick with the bug and the flu and all that kind of stuff. So let's pray for them as well. All right. Let's bow our heads in prayer, brother. Uh, brother Larry, pray for us and just thank the good Lord for the offering today. Okay. Father, as we come to you this morning, we come to you with a thankful heart. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what we've heard already, Lord, with answered prayer. And God, we want to praise you Indeed. for answered prayer. Thank you that we have the avenue of prayer that we can bring our petitions to you. Yes, Lord. And we know that you'll answer according to your perfect will. God, we want to tell you right now we love you. We thank you for your goodness. Indeed. Thank you for a church house to meet in. Thank you for a pastor that wears your word, that will preach your word. Father, Amen. I pray that you anoint him with power. And God, I just pray that you hide him behind the cross and may lift up Jesus and lift him high. I pray for that soul that's in our midst this morning that needs you and yes, to free pardon of sin. God, I pray that you just touch that heart. Thank you for this offer we're about to receive. Yes, we ask you to bless it, Lord. Use it for the need of the hour. For it's in Jesus' precious name we ask it. To him we pray. Amen. Amen.
Thank God it's a lot of birthdays here this morning. Birthdays and happy birthdays.
praise God for that red, white, and blue, don't you? I praise God for the flag. I'm going to ask at this time all men, women as well, veterans, and you fellas, all of you to come up here on the stage. I want you to help me salute the flag this morning, all right? So come on, fellas, all of you that served. Many of you, we saw your picture. We saw your picture, some of you, 30 years ago, so we don't know who you are now because you look real young a long time ago. Amen. Amen. But come on, let's give them all a big hand while they come. Amen. Amen. church 
Uh, some of you were asking about the turkeys to be donated. And uh, what I'm going to do, Miss Janet, I'm just going to point you because I don't have nobody else to pick on this morning. Amen. But uh, what we what we decided to do, and some of you were asking, we've got a sign-up list of people that are going to donate turkeys to families in need here in the church, okay? And people were asking me, preacher, how we want to do that. So what we've decided to do is whatever you decide you want to give towards the turkey, you give it to Miss Janet. Miss Janet, we've got a list back there, and you sign up the list if you're going to give a turkey, okay? It's in the foyer there, and you make sure all the money gets to Miss Janet. What we'll do is when we receive all the money, we will, we will, we will go buy all the turkeys at one time, get the same kind, and everybody get the same kind. Are you all with me on that? Okay, that will cause a lot of dis and confusion and different things like that. Just uh, sign up the sheet, and if you would like to donate the turkey, this is a for, these are for families and people in our church right here, okay? And so we're going to take care of that, and uh, Miss Jan will take care of the money for us, and we'll see to it that these families uh, get that turkey in need. Also, we have a table out there, we're asking everybody to bring some canned goods, and anything uh, that you want to, we're going to have to get you to re be, remind you there. And between now and Thanksgiving, okay, bring some canned goods and we'll distribute that as well with the turkeys in these homes, okay? Amen. Are you all with me on that? And uh, make, sure, make sure you remember that, okay? Because I didn't bring anything today. We didn't bring something tonight. You can bring it tonight. Put it on the table back there. When you get a can of beans, buy it. You can bring it up here, that kind of thing, okay? And we'll help out all these families. Praise God. I, I've never seen the service with so many announcements in my life. Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Exodus chapter 15. I appreciate you men that served our country. I mean, that. this is your day. This is Memorial Day. We, uh, we're, we're not Memorial Day of, the, uh, of our military men. Now, they've got that open tomorrow down the road, don't they? Don't they have that uh, down at the... What's the veterans place down there? Down in Bedford, it's going to be open tomorrow. they got a big thing going on. Don't they have a meal for everybody? Brother Carter, you said something about that, didn't you? Oh, that's another place. Oh, another place. But it's going to be open tomorrow. They've got, a, they've got a whole big thing going on tomorrow. I heard about it. That's why I said that. So if you can go, that would be horrible. All right. Exodus 15, verses 1 through 3. I want to read one little verse that goes along with our... Our veterans here today help them out a little bit. Uh, let's look at verse number one here, first of all. Exodus 15. Y'all got it? Say amen. amen. The Bible says, Then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he hath thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and, my, and, my, and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My Father's God. And I will exalt him. They're praising God because they just crossed that big old Red Sea. Amen. And boy, they've just given praise to God and exalted God. And then there's a phrase here in verse number 3 that says, The Lord is a man of war. How about that? That's right. The Lord is his name. The Lord is a man of war. Amen? All right, amen. Don't right. you kid yourself that God is some long-haired thing sitting on an old rocking chair up in heaven. The Lord is a man of war. Right. How about that? Amen. I want to talk to you a little bit about that and show you a little bit of significance of what God's saying here. And I want to talk to you about the subject of salvation. Brother Carter said it a while ago. It's a blessed thing this time of the year, especially Thanksgiving time, to be able to thank the Lord that you know that you're saved. Amen. I'm glad I'm saved today. Amen. And I want to thank God that I know that I'm saved. Amen. And I want to show you that today. God. Show you the war that Jesus went to for us. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for helping us today. Thank you for our veterans. Thank you for these men that served our country. Thank you for, oh Lord, the, their, their many sacrifices that they've given. And Lord, for those that are still doing it today, men and women as well. And God, we thank you for our country. We thank you for the United States of America. 
for the freedoms we get to enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for our nation. Lord, I pray today you take the word of God and speak to our hearts. Help every child of God here today. Help those that order in need of something from the Lord today. I pray you give it to them, the Lord, today, Lord. Help us. Help each and every family today. We'll give you praise. We'll give you glory now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Now, I'm going to preach fast, so you got to listen fast. <laughs> Amen. Right. Y'all took all my time, so I'm going to get in gear. Here it goes. Amen. God had just brought his people across the Red Sea. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm telling you, he had, he had marvelously, as the Word of God says, gloriously saved and helped his people. Right. God's right. always for his people. Amen. Amen. What he did, as the Bible says here, God's deliverance was for Pharaoh. And there's many times, the Bible didn't say for Pharaoh, but it says the Egyptians. And, and the, the, the word there, the Egyptians, there, God is talking about what he brought them out from Egypt. And God brought his people out of Egypt there. And Egypt in the Bible is a type of the world and worldliness and worldly living. In other words, God saved them. And in verse number two, here we see the Lord's my strength and my song and is become my salvation. Amen. And that picture of crossing the Red Sea is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ delivering, bringing salvation as the word here uh, by Moses and the folks here that are singing and giving glory and praise to God. Amen. Amen. We see, first of all, verse number one, the Lord defeated them. He drowned them. He says, uh, he says, for he hath triumphed gloriously. The horse and the rider he hath thrown into the sea. He defeated the enemy. He drowned them. We see the Lord. And they began singing in verse number one. Then sang Moses and the children of Israel. Can you be a man? Can you imagine all the thousands, over 600,000 of them, up to a million of them, are praising God and singing for just being gloriously delivered out of the bondage of Egypt. It's a wonderful thing to think about there, what Amen. God did. Can you imagine God dividing the Red Sea that they could walk across on dry land? What a great miracle in the Word of God that we have here. No wonder they were singing and praising God. And so we see the Lord defeated them. We see, number two, the Lord delivered them. He's their song. He's their salvation. He's their strength today. Amen. I mean, the word salvation means deliverance. And so when you get saved by the grace of God, we're going to talk about it. If you ever put your faith in Christ, you are delivered. Amen? Amen. You are changed. And, and thank God He delivers yes. us in salvation. So we see here their song. We see the strength. We see salvation. But we also see the Lord as a soldier here. He is a man of war. Right. Amen? He's Amen. a man of war. And I've got to thinking about God's great picture here. What he's trying to show us in salvation here. If you really look at this thing spiritually here, you'll see how the salvation of the Lord pictures here. And, and, and I want to show you that. Look at some verses here. I'm going to show you what salvation and where it came from here. I believe you'll pick it up in these verses here. Read with me some verses. Look at verse number 6 real quickly. What's the first three words of verse number 6? Thy right, right hand. Y'all see that? O Lord, it's become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, hath dashed in pieces the enemy. Right. So we're already going somewhere about how the deliverance came. Two times God said in verse 6, Thy hand, O Lord, thy hand. Look at verse number 10 and 11 with me. Look at verse 10, same chapter. Thou didst blow with thy wind. The sea covered them. They sank as lead in the mighty waters. Right. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praise, doing wonders here? It says here in verse number 16, verse 16 where I'm trying to go. Fear and dread shall fall upon them by thy greatness of thine arm. Y'all see that? By the greatness of thine arm, they shall be as still as a stone till thy people pass over, O Lord, until thy people pass over which thou hast purchased. Look at verse number 17. Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thine inheritance in the place, O Lord, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, with which, which thy hands have established. Amen. Amen. More than one time 
here in this chapter right here, you have evidence and reference to his hand, his arm, his right hand. Always in the Bible when you see the right hand, it illustrates the power of an almighty God. Are y'all getting this? Amen. Where I'm going with this is I'm trying to show you how you got gloriously saved by the grace of God. Amen. If, if they got delivered by the almighty power of his right hand, guess how you got saved? Amen. Amen. Right. You got saved by an almighty hand. That's right. The wonderful hand of God here. And so we see here, what they, number one, what they got saved from. They got saved. Listen, Israel was going to die. God healed them up in the mountains there. Had them pinned in. God led them to the place to where they were. It was, it was God or the enemy. Amen. It was the enemy that was going to take their life and they were going to die. And death was surely going to come. Are y'all listening to where I'm going with that? Can I tell you that's exactly what hung over our heads before we ever got saved by the grace of God? Death hung over our heads. Amen. Right. You say, preacher, you got any scripture for that? I'm glad you asked. Amen. 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 Yeah. The Bible says over there in Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 6, we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Amen. But thank God Jesus came along there and he offered to take our place. Amen. Amen. And we were saved from death. Amen. Amen. Oh, praise the Lord here. We want to look at chapter 13. Go back there to chapter 13. Let me show you something real quickly here. i got to hurry here so y'all hang with me here now. Chapter 13, verse number 3. Verse, verse number 3. Look at here. It says something about his hand again here. It says, chapter 13, verse 3. Moses said unto the people, Remember this day in which he came out from Egypt, out of the house of Moses, for, the, for by strength of hand of the Lord, brought you out from this place. Therefore shall no leavened bread be eaten. Notice that little phrase there. No leavened bread be eaten. Now, now the leaven in the Bible is a type of sin. Did you know that? And what they did over there, what they did in the Word of God here, he, he said no leaven should be eaten. Now, in other words, they were to make no le- unleavened bread. Amen. What they did before God performed this miracle is they, they crucified the lamb. I preached a little bit about that last week. But not only did they do that, but they, they ate, they made unleavened bread. In other words, they swept the house. It's a picture of purging out the whole house, cleaning out the entire. In other words, everything in the house had to be cleaned out. No leaven, unleavened bread there. It was unleavened bread. It couldn't be any leavened bread. Leaven's a picture of sin. So in other words, no sin was to be allowed in the house. Amen. What God was trying to show them is that sin is going to be purged this night in the children of Israel. And they were going to go catch it with me now. They were going to go through the Red Sea. Amen. And sin was going to be rid of and going to be gone. Amen. And they would be saved from death. Amen. Hello? Amen. Y'all getting that? Amen. You want to happen in salvation? 1 Corinthians, the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 7, the Bible says, it says here, it says, Your glory is not good. Know you not that a little leaven leaveneth the whole lump? Purge out, therefore, the old leaven, that ye may be a new lump, as ye are unleavened. The Bible says, ye are unleavened. There, for Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Amen. Amen. Jesus went to an old rugged cross to die on an old rugged cross. He's our Passover. Amen. Amen. And praise God, he said, you are unleavened there. In other words, sin's got to be gone there. And the only way sin can be gone, somebody had to die. Right. Right. Amen. 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 Because Jesus died for you and me, guess what? Salvation for us saves us from our own death. Right. You're looking at an old boy who's saved and saved completely. Amen. Amen. When I died today, we, we talked about heaven and when we died in Sunday school class a while ago, when I die, praise God, I'm going to be absent from the body and present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's what my Bible says. I believe that. You know why? Because I've been saved from death. Amen. Jesus saved me from death. Amen. Amen. He, like the children of Israel, He brought them through right there. I'm thankful. The Bible says in verse Ephesians 2, He raised us up and set us us in heavenly places. How did he raise us up? I'll tell you how. That strong right salvation arm picked us up. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, you was on your way down. You couldn't save 
save yourself. You cannot save yourself. Amen. Somebody had to raise you up. Amen. Amen. I like that. And so Jesus had saved us from, from this bondage. That's what Israel was going through. The Bible says in John 5 and verse 25 there, we passed from death unto life. Amen. Why? Because we believed on Him. Amen. Are y'all saved today? Amen. Do you know the Lord today? Amen. Are you 100% sure? When you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you pass from where you were. Where were you? You were dead in your trespasses and in your sin. But when Jesus saved you, you pass from death unto life. Amen. And the Bible says in that same verse, and shall not come into condemnation. Amen. When I put my faith in Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ applied to my life, I pass from death unto life, and I ain't going to hell, can't go to hell, couldn't go to hell, if I tried to go to hell. Amen. Why? Because I put my faith in Him. Amen. Amen. And I pass from death unto life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I'm not charismatic, but I'm prone to be one. Amen. Amen. I like it because I'm saved today. Amen. Salvation from death. Well, He said in chapter 13, verse number three, very important thing about being saved from death. He said, verse number three. He said, remember this day. Y'all get that? Look at chapter 12. The, the chapter before that, chapter 12, verse 42. Verse 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out of the land of Egypt. Y'all see that? Amen. God brought them out and delivered them. <laughs> and it's, it's to be observed. This night, this night that they got salvation is to be observed. It's to be remembered. Let's go on to chapter 13. Look at verse number 9. Chapter 13. Look at verse 9. And it shall be a sign unto thee upon thine hand, and for a memorial, a memorial between thine eyes, that the Lord's law may be in thy mouth. For with a strong hand hath the Lord brought thee out of Egypt. Amen? Amen. And we're to remember it. We're to observe it. We're never to forget it. I have never forgot the day that the Lord saved me. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. He said, remember. And you know what the problem most of us Baptists are? We forgot what God's done for us. Right, right, right. We forgot, remember, we forget, we forget, we forget what God's done for us. We forgot the day that He saved us. We're not observing it. Listen, it's all right to testify and say, 20 years ago, Jesus saved my soul. That's all right. Amen. That's remembering the day. Amen. That's what we all do. Amen. I hope this Thanksgiving month and this Thanksgiving season, I hope you'll be driving down the road or going somewhere and you remember the day. I hope you have a Pentecostal fit, thanking God. Amen. Amen. I hope you're at home somewhere and you're just the Holy Ghost just flashes upon you the day that He saved you. I hope that you praise Him and remember that day. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank God I'm not going to die. I don't have to worry about dying. I don't have to worry about going to hell today. I don't have to worry about my sins. are gone. Why? He saved me from all that. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. That helped about three of you. Amen. I got five minutes. What am I going to do with it? Salvation from death. But I'm going to give you this real quickly. You not only see that what's going on here. Salvation shall from death, but we see salvation's discovery. In salvation from death, we see the work of God. That's what He did. But when we see salvation's discovery, we see something about the Word of God. Amen. Right? Now watch this. I've been saved a long time. In other words, you'll hear what I'm saying. I'll say it as they say it in the Word of God. I've been on my journey with the Lord a long time. Have you? Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. And on my journey, since I have left out of Egypt, praise God, I've got saved out of that mess. I have, uh, well, for a word, I need some help. Right, right. Haven't you? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. On their journey, they weren't all together perfect. Matter of fact, they were 40 years imperfect. Say amen. Right. Right. It was in 40 years, what took them just a few days to get over there in Canaan where they could have been. Forty years they wandered around in a circle, a merry-go-round, murmuring and grinding and complaining, and there was a reason for all that. God had to teach His people something. Amen? Right. And I'm not telling you today I've arrived, neither have you arrived. But guess what? 
in our discovery and on our journey. Chapter 15, get over there real quickly. Chapter 15, chapter 15, here they go on their journey. Verse 22, the Bible says that Moses, uh, chapter 15, verse 22, so Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea after they crossed that Red Sea. And they went out in the wilderness to Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So they and some more got so much three days from the great miracle deliverance there. The first thing they find out is there's no water. Amen. I'm just going to have to shorten it here but because uh, I can't preach all this. Amen. But they got to where they didn't have any food either. Amen. They had no food, no water. So in other words, all of a sudden, uh, they had to be dependent on the Lord. Right. Amen. 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 Look at the next verse. Look at verse, verse 24. The people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord. Moses did. Verse number 25 here. And the Lord showed him. Look at this. The Lord showed him a tree. How about Amen. Amen. You reckon that's a mistake in your Bible? No, sir. Yeah. Everybody, I get now. They're thirsty. Amen. They're thirsty. Are y'all get this? Yeah. They're thirsty. They're drink. Mm-hmm. What, what, my, Brother Mike, what are you going to show me a tree for? I'm thirsty. I'm, I'm thirsty. This look, I need something to drink. The Lord showed him the truth. Amen. Praise his name. The word show there. <laughs> I'm going to preach this whether they be here all day. I'm going to preach this Amen. Amen. The word show there is, we get the term, it's an art, you fellas that shoot archery, bow and arrow. The word, the word show carries the idea of aiming like an archer. You know with me? Yeah. Get it, man. This is where some of us are on our journey. Some of you have been saved by the grace of God. Some of you thirsty this morning. Praise you, brother. Some of you hungry this morning. You've been saved. You've been delivered by death. And some of you thirsty. Moses cried unto the Lord, and the Lord said, Shh. Shh. Amen. Amen. Show them the truth. Are y'all getting that? In other words, God said, aim at the tree. They're thirsty. The Bible says, He showed you the tree which when He had cast it in the waters. He cast the tree in the waters. The Bible says the waters were made sweet. Amen. Amen. There He made for them a statue and an ordinance. And there he proved them and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Amen. Amen. God said, Hey, if you remember that I am the Lord that delivers and I am the Lord that is the Hey, he showed the tree. That's a picture of the cross. That's a picture of Calvary. That's a picture of our deliverer of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, if you listen, if you do, if you keep my commandments, nothing can take care of you. Nothing will come upon you. None of these diseases will. Amen. Amen. That's what God's saying to you and me today. I, I, I'm telling you today, we need to listen, the Bible said to do, to give ear and to keep. Amen. I'm just trying to tell you, when you get saved and you get delivered and the blood of Jesus has been applied, you're going to still have to remember the old leg cross. And on your journey, when you get thirsty and when you get hungry, and you need to taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I wouldn't know where I'd be today without this here book right here. Amen. Times in my life where I've been without. I've been without physical. I've been without finances. I've been without. I've been hungry. I've been thirsty. Oh, Psalm 119 says this. How sweet are thy words unto thy taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to thy mouth. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusted in him. First Peter 2, 3. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen. How many of you know that the Lord is gracious? Amen. Amen. You know what? I looked up that word gracious and I had a fit on that. The word gracious means to furnish what is needed? Praise God. The Lord is gracious today. And when you get hungry, when you get 
get thirsty on your journey, you're going to find out that He's gracious. He'll give you exactly what you need when you need it, right on time, all the time. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. You all right with this preacher? I know you, you're looking at me real quick. You all right with this? You all right? Praise God. I'm trying to tell you what kind of God we've got. Amen. He not only saves you from death, but salvation's discovery is this. You'll find out that on your journey, the more you need God is going to come from this blessed source, the Word of God. You need the Bible is what you need. Amen. Stick with the book. Stick with God. Amen. It's sweeter than honey. Amen. Amen. Taste and see the Lord's good. Right, amen. Right here's your source. Amen. 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 I wrote down what I found after salvation is that I need the Word. Amen. I need the Word. It helps me on my journey. And I can trust Him in His Word. Amen. Amen. Yesterday I saw a bunch of I ain't gonna tell them Bernie or none of them. <laughs> he had a hot dog that high. <laughs> all the chili that wine. Then somebody said that much banana food. He said, what am I going to do with that? I turned over five minutes later, the entire thing was gone. <laughs> Where you at, man? I was amazed. For what he had just done, I had already done before he got in there. And I got thinking about, have y'all ever eaten? Y'all know what I'm talking about, a cat head biscuit. Does anybody have any sense in here? I'm talking about when it comes out of the oven, first it comes out of the oven. And you open it up and you still, and you see it like Hardy's doing there, advertising, you still see the steam going up. You put butter all over it. If anybody's got any sense to mix it with honey, and put honey all over that with butter, and put that on that biscuit, I'm trying to tell you it tastes something sweet like you ain't never. It'll slap your brains out if you're in here. I'm telling you, there ain't nothing bad. My mama used to make them things. And I always had to buy me some honey, and she'd mix that with me. I could still see her mixing that butter and that honey together, and I'd, be, I'd sop it, I'd eat it, I'd put it on the bed. I mean, I just, I had it all over me. I praise God for that. Ain't nothing sweeter than that. Amen. Amen. That's what God says about the Word of God. Amen. Oh, taste and see. The Lord's sweet. It's sweet as honey right here. There ain't nothing Amen. sweeter. I'm trying to tell you something. If you're thirsty and you're hungry and you're down and you're defeated and life is not going the way you are, like it, and so it's coming, I'm telling you something sweet here today. It's the Word of God. Amen. And when you go on your journey every day, you're going to have to find something that sustains you. And it's the Word of God. Amen. Amen. It's God's Word. Amen. 12 o'clock. It's 4 after 12. I got to quit. Hey, I ain't preaching, brother. Salvation from death. Salvation is discovery. They found out that they better trust in the Lord. <coughs> Guess what happened? We see over here, and I go quickly, we see salvation from life. In salvation from death, we see the work of God. In salvation discovery, we see the Word of God. But in salvation to life, we see the ways of God. The ways of God is in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Can y'all can y'all handle one more verse right there? Amen. Let's go to Deuteronomy and I'm going to be quiet. I want you to see this. You get over here to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and they make it over to Canaan land. Hallelujah. Now Canaan land's not heaven. Don't, don't mess that up. Canaan, Canaan land was the promised land that God brought them out of Egypt. It's the victorious Christian life. It's a, it's a happy living that God gives you while you're a child of God living before heaven. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Heaven's come. This Amen. is Canaan land. This is living on the journey happy but in the Lord. And, and rejoice. Look at here in Deuteronomy chapter 8. He says, all the commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. All the commandments that I command thee this day, ye shall observe to do that ye may live. There it is. And multiply Go in and possess the land which the Lord swears to your father. He, he tells them you have this land. It's your land. I gave it to you. I swear it to your fathers. It's your land. He says here, <coughs> verse 2, Thou shalt remember all the way of the Lord thy God. Amen. That, that, that God led thee in these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee. Here's why the Lord did this a 40 years. To humble thee, to prove thee, to know what was in your heart whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna 
which thou knewest not, neither did the fathers know that he might make thee to know the man that doth not live by bread only, but by every word which proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. You see that? Amen. God had to prove them. He had to humble them so that they would trust God every day of their lives. Amen? Amen. Can I tell you something? The trouble that you're going through might be God's way of humbling you so that you will depend on God and trust God. He's making something out of you. Amen? Praise God so that you'll know that every word comes from God and you better trust His word. And when you do, God bless you. Amen. Amen. Look down at verse number 7. He said, For the Lord thy God bringeth thee into a good land, a land of brooks of water, the fountains of death that spring up out of the valleys and the hills. This is the land they're going in. A land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates and a land of oil, olive, and and honey. Y'all see that? Praise God. They had the Lord help us all. And verse number 9. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron and out of those hills thou mayest dig brass. When thou hast eaten and art full thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which thou hast given thee. Y'all see that? Amen. God gave them a land full of everything. Amen. When the spies went over there, they brought back clusters of grapes and figs and pomegranates there. He said, surely the Lord had done this, and surely it floweth, the Bible said, with milk and honey. That's the land that God gave them. Hey, my friends, if you're saved today by the grace of God, that's where God's brought you to. Amen. He said, not one of you will be in scarceness. You won't be empty. You won't be without. Right. That's how good God is. Today. Amen. God loves you so much, He'll take care of you. Amen. Milk stands for strength. God gave my land for milk. Drink milk. Go strong. What's honey for? Well, praise God, ain't nothing sweet. So one stands for strength, the other stands for sweetness. You know, since I've been saved, I've enjoyed the sweet manna of the Lord. Amen. And the joy of being saved from death. And on my journey, having the Word of God, I get to now enjoy the delights of the ways of God. Amen. We had a lady yesterday go out here from our, we had how many booths? 20 booths? One of the ladies left out of here, and I talked to several people yesterday. I mean, I've talked to everybody. We just had a good old time everywhere. Ate and fellowship with everybody. Just had a ball yesterday. Amen. One of the ladies left here. She said, you know, there ain't nothing like being around God's people. Amen. Amen. And I got to thinking about that last night. And I said, you know what? On my journey, I, I cannot thank God enough. Not only for my Savior who died for me. Shed his blood. That I could live in this victorious Christian Canaan land experience. And I, I, I've enjoyed that because I've been around all of God's people. Amen. Amen. It's wonderful to be at church and to have a Lord in the house. But not only, but the fellowship and one of God, all of God's people there. Amen. And just enjoy one of the, there was a high spirit around here yesterday. It was because the Lord was around here. Amen. It's a bunch of God's people that love God. Amen. Now there's always murmurs and grumpers and fussers and cussers and all that kind of stuff. But I'm glad to tell you, I'm glad to tell you, I got saved and I'm happy on my journey. Amen. And I love the church that Jesus died for. And I love God's people. Amen. And my journey is in the church and around the church and around the people of God. They love God. They love to serve God. They're happy in the Lord. That's Christian matter. Amen. Yes, sir, that's the Canaan land experience. Amen. And I'll tell you, there ain't nothing greater than that. Let me, let me just say this to you. Y'all come on and get a song. I'm going to try to shut up. I'm trying to shut up now. <laughs> Jesus said he was a man of war. Right. His strong right hand, his strong arm, seven, eight, nine, ten times in that chapter, delivered Israel. Y'all listen to me. Jesus is a man of war. 2,000 years ago, on Calvary's Hill, on the cross, he went to war. Right. Y'all listen to me. Amen. He went to war for you. 
Praise God. He licked the war for me. Can I say he fought a battle that I don't have to fight? That's right. He won a battle that I didn't have to go to. I couldn't die on the cross. You couldn't die on the cross. You couldn't pay for anybody's sin. The right. sunless son, right. son of God and the sinless Son of God, what I'm trying to say. The one who did not sin, the one who did not have to go, he went anyway. He died in your place, paid the price for your sins. He went to war against the devil, the demons of hell, and the power of death. Amen. Right. Amen. He came death for you and me so that you and I could have victory today. Amen. Amen. He died, and when we sang the song this morning, it is finished. He took his last breath and he said, Co Palestine, which means it is finished. I've done what I'm supposed to do. I did my part. I came and died for the sins of man, and I paid for their sins. May I say to you today, he won the war. Amen. 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 If you're here today and you don't know Christ, maybe you need to come and realize somebody fought about it for you. Amen. You've never been saved today. Jesus loves you. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. That's why I went to the Calvary. That's right. That's why I went to the cross. You go out here today and be saved and eternally secure today. And on your way to heaven today, you can be 1,000% sure in your soul. Right. If you laid your head down tonight and passed away, you would be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Right. He said, you believe on me? He said, I will in no wise catch it out. Amen. Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, the Bible says, shall be saved. Amen. Amen. I hope you know the Lord today. I'm glad I'm saved. Amen. Amen. Saved from death. Don't have to worry about dying. He took my place. Right. Let's all stand today. Let's have a word of prayer. I want to ask everybody here today while we have our hands bowed. I appreciate all of you coming, many visitors here today. We're grateful to have all visitors. Amen. But it doesn't matter whether you're a member or a visitor. I want to ask all of you today. Is your soul ready to meet God? Are you prepared? Are you prepared to meet the Lord today? You say, preacher, I know for sure in my heart and in my soul, I know for sure I'm ready. Jesus, the man of war, went to the cross and fought the battle so that you could be saved. If you're here today and you're not sure you're saved, my friend, it's by the word of God that we get saved. You come and trust Christ and put your faith in Christ. And you're born again by the word of God, the Bible says. How many of you say, Preacher, I know I'm saved. I'm not. I'm not. I know I'm on my way to heaven. Raise your hand toward God today. Just as a testimony. I'm not. I'm not. Lift your hand high to Him today. God bless you. Hands everywhere today. Hands everywhere. Maybe you couldn't raise your hand today. That's all right, friend. That's all right. Maybe you couldn't raise your hand. You can lower your hands now. Maybe you couldn't raise it a minute ago. You say, preacher, what do I do about it? I'll tell you what you do. You just give your heart to Christ. Amen. Give your heart and soul to Christ. Then take the Bible. We'll be glad. I'll be glad to show you how to be saved today, friend. I beg you, don't leave here without Christ. He paid that price for you. He wants to save you. I'm going to have a word of prayer. While I'm praying, if you want to trust Christ, why don't you just come get around this altar. We'll bring a Bible to you. We'll show you right there on the altar how to be saved. I believe Jesus will save you if you can get honest with God today. I believe He'll save you. Let's pray today. Heavenly Father, take this invitation now. Thank you for Jesus. Jesus was the greatest soldier that ever lived. He fought a battle and He won the battle. I'm glad I'm on my way to heaven. I'm glad, I, I'm, glad I'm on the journey with the Lord. I'm glad I can step into Canaan, victorious Christian living. Honey, milk and honey, sweetness. Oh, it's a joy to serve God and live for God and, and be around God's people and be in the church and, and serve God together. Lord, I pray today, verse one, never, never.
never been saved, never given a heart to Christ. Today is their day. Today is their joy. Today is their song of deliverance. Today. Today is when they get to rejoice because you reach down and save their soul. Help them to come now and be saved. Help Christians today that if they're thirsty, or they're hungry, some are thirsty, some are hungry, only because they've gotten away from the Word of God. I pray today they get around the altar and say, Lord, give me a thirst for the Word of God. Give me a hunger for the Word of God so I can feel that presence and know, Lord, that you're with me along the journey. Help Christians today, Lord. Thank you for the Word of God now, in Jesus' name. Hymn number 480. We're going to sing the song that if God has spoken to your heart today, why don't you come? We'll be glad to show you the Bible. Listen, my dad showed me the Bible. That's how I got saved. I'm on the way to heaven because of it. We'll be glad to show you how to be saved today. We'll rejoice with you. I guarantee you this preacher will sing and shout with you too. Amen. Amen. You need to come today. Christians, are you thirsty? Are you hungry? I know the source today that will fill your wagon up. Amen. You come today. God spoke to your heart. Come on right now. Come on. Every soul. You need to come. Come on. Get some help today. Get some help. Get some help. Get some help. Thank you. 